So far, we got six. Six in the chats. Abby says she's going to watch only while her husband makes his dinner. I don't know why I even bother to put it to Abby that she should show up because... Let's face it, gang. It's always, always something better. I'm a full-time now on dispatcher, so I work 40 hours a week. I commute 10 hours a week because I'm going back and forth. So up to 50 hours, and then I produce nine podcasts. Like, I did a podcast earlier today. I did my Thursday sports show. I did this podcast you just watched on Tuesday. Now I'm doing this one. Apparently, I have to be on one tomorrow. And then I have to record two more on Friday, possibly one on Saturday. I do it all for you. Abby got to have dinner, though, with her husband. <laughs> oh, Felony, did you know that I had a sports show earlier today that addressed this? Actually, you know what, what drove me nuts about that is I forgot to play a Norm McDonald clip at the end. I was going to do that. I had it all set up, and I forgot. Uh, Jonathan says he's first. Will Cray says he's second. Mountain Films, third. Mountain Films, you're going to jump on with me tonight. Tonight, I am uh, showing one of my old films. I cut it down uh, to length, and I'll be presenting it here tonight uh, with your blessing. It doesn't have you in it. It's just me. Uh, Foxy's here. Sillamander's here. Felonies comes in 55th. Johnny the Bills fan also here. Micah, Tanner, 7th. Hello again to my own sister. I missed the date. It's uh, not a default, Tanner. It's tentatively scheduled for June, but we've already got some problems. As soon as I, as soon as I try to make plans, this is the problem with making plans. As soon as I make plans, uh, we got fourteen people here. I could start the show, and then I'll just look at you while I talk to you. I bet you guys would like that. Why don't we do that? Where's that thing at? Dewey, where's the button? Here it is. What's up? Welcome to the after show. Tanner, I missed the date. When is the meetup in the fall? Why am I wearing these? Unless Dewey gets here, I don't need to wear them. The date is not in the fall. Like I said, as soon as you start making plans with somebody, as soon as you, because somebody's got to take the lead, right? Somebody's got to be in charge. I guess that's me. Makes sense. But I say, let's do it June 15th. Okay. Felony Melanie's been leading the charge for this. She's been saying, I want a Des Moines meetup. Let's figure out a time to do it. I say, okay, what about June 15th? Can't June 15th. I'm out of town. I'm seeing I'm, I, I'm seeing someone more important than you that day, John. Can't do it June 15th. Okay. Might have to do it without you, Felony Melanie. That would be sad. But then Drew's like, oh, I'm traveling that week. I might be going to Los Angeles the week before the week after. I'm like, well, that's not the week of. Nothing is fixed yet, so... I mean, we, you know, we could move it up to his four or five weeks. We could have it in the fall. Des Moines beautiful in the fall. I love October. So nothing's fixed yet. What I'm looking for is, is people showing me that they're interested. That means you need to go to the comp center Facebook page. You need to click interest on it. I don't care if you put in the comments, Hey, this date works better for me. What if everybody got in the comments and said, you know, what really works great? October 7th. Then I would see like, wait, maybe October 7th works for me and we can all work it out. So I just want to see the level of interest. Now, where am I coming from with this? This is very important, guys. And then I'll get back to your questions. One year ago today, one year ago, I went to North Carolina. I was invited by Jason Kiefer, my co-host of the sports show. He said, hey, we're going out to meet the whole gang. Uh, on the network, we're going down to Clayton, North Carolina. And so, Rob, Dan, 
and Jason all went down to North Carolina. I'm like, okay, well, when I became a podcaster, Jason was ironically the first person who called me. It wasn't even Drew. Um, so then, uh, you know, I was working with Eric on his book and then, uh, meeting Drew is important because I was, gonna, I was, had just started the show with him, uh, Josh and, um, Jay was going to be there and Andrea, very important. And I go down there and all, all the whole, the whole, every, every single person that we thought could replace Mike the cop that we thought, we thought we, if we built 19 people on this team, we could replace Mike the cop. Met them all. We had more podcasters there than we did Wolf Packers. And so, like, I, you know, I get it that we had it on a Wednesday. I get it that we had it in the middle of the school year. I get it. You guys got kids. You got jobs. You can't just walk away from that for a podcast. David flew from San Diego. Uh, Will Cray, Tyler, they came uh, from Minnesota. Teresa came from Michigan. So we had people go to extreme lengths because they loved that podcast so much this time if we're going to meet up i want to make sure that you guys get the best experience out of it also i want to make sure i get the best experience out of it and what i mean by that is like all the chips got to get pushed in i want i want you guys to make connections with each other build friendships with each other network with each other professionally personally whatever i want you to i want you to enjoy the friendships that you guys have as friends of the podcast more so than with me cuz i'm just kind of the guy that connects you guys all together and not, and not even necessarily me it's more so drew but i want you to get the most out of it i want you to feel like if you're driving to des moines or flying to iowa that this is an this is a big experience i don't want you to drive drive or fly and have it be a medium to small experience this has got to be big I don't want to do a small thing. I don't like doing things small. I want it to be all, I need to be big. So in order for me to know how big it is, I need some level of commit. I'm not going to hold you to it. If you back out on it, you decide you want to do other things for your life, that's fine. I'm going to treat you as well as I've always treated you. Sorry, Abby. Uh, but I want to see, I want to, if you guys are interested, I've got to know. And this is the only way I have of knowing. Because I don't, it's very hard to, to, to pull you guys. All right. Melanie wants to know if the moon were made of barbecue spare ribs, would you eat it? It's a simple question, doctor. Melanie is in a good mood because the very first thing I did this morning, Melanie, you don't even want to know what I was doing when I saw that roll up on my Instagram feed. Uh, the old skit with uh, Jeff Goldblum and Will Ferrell. I sent it to her this morning and I think it made uh, her morning at least. Micah says, Micah, Captain, serial number 69. Uh, we take turns cooking. Abby, that's good. You probably have like the most progressive uh, centrist marriage of all time. Foxy says, of course, Micah. Salamander says, it's been too long. Too long. Too long. Hello again. Yeah. <laughs> Abby says, there you are. Fox has hit that like button. I don't think it matters if you hit like here, does it? Probably. Abby's still saying her dude. Easy there. Christy wants me to stop picking Abby. You guys realize that picky, that Abby makes my life a little bit difficult, right? She's a good, good person, but <laughs> she, she starts it most of the time. Don't be mean to Abby. Some other man always gets in the way. Yeah, there's too many of us. You want me to be nicer and you pick on Abby? Yeah, I no, Foxy, I'm not asking you to be nicer. I'm asking you to stop being so negative. Abby says, thanks, Christy. Thanks, Falk. John's problem is that he knows I adore him, so he, he has to be mean to me. Abby, that's not a credo created by me. That's uh, sort of the maxim of all men, that we are cool and aloof to the women who love us, and that uh, that distance uh, and that... Uh, you know, that lack of reciprocity is what uh, drives women forward in their adoration. Felony says OJ is dead. Covered that in an excellent show earlier today. To be honest with you, I did a pretty good job on it. John says, uh, or Dewey says, John, I want to see you. Well, I want you to be on the show, Dewey. Don't leave me out here by myself, mans. Silmander says, I'm picking on Abby too. Felony money says, yes, I was there. Silmander says, woo. 
Abby says, so you're not picking on me, are you? Or Stillamander's not. I'll let you two figure that out. Tanner John's working, so I don't think he can show his face while working. I'm, I'm working right now, but I'm also showing my face. Tony Miley says, it's my fault. Yeah, I mean, you were the first one to say it was a problem. You were the first one to demand action and the first one to complain. Johnny, sorry if I might drop you all bad storms here in North Carolina. Johnny, I miss having a good bad storm in North Carolina. I wish, I wish right now I was out on Kitty Hawk or somewhere around there, and I was looking out at a violent storm over the crashing waves in the darkness. And I would swim out with the tide. And that would be that. There would just be my my wallet and keys stacked on top of each other on the beach. Sillamander says, that's too soon. I'm poor. I hear you, man. Why do you think we're meeting in Des Moines? It's, it's, it's because it's a place I can afford to go. Marines blood. Hey, all. I missed most of the show since my phone decided to lock, and I didn't have time to unlock until now. Well, welcome, Marines blood. I saw you in the uh, OJ show earlier. I hope you liked that. Mike Dutcher says, good evening, guys. What's going on up there, Mike? You must be delighted to know that the latest incident of uh, police atrocities is not in Minneapolis this year. Tanner, June is super short notice. Yeah. We're short-stepped at summer's busy season for us. Tanner, I don't even know if June works for me yet. Again, I'm just searching interest. If I can get a if I can get a, a, a chunk of interest, you know, if it works better for Silamander, for Marine's Blood, or whoever, um, to move it, it can be moved. We have the power here. This is a republic. You know, we can act this way in a democracy. Tanner says, June short notice. Yeah, Silamander, I want to know what you're always drinking. Well, it's not always the same. Tonight uh, is an energy drink because I'm very tired. I got four hours of sleep last night, and that was a long time ago. I, I got up 14 hours ago to go to work. I've already done one show and all this. This is a C4 energy drink, which is cheap. Uh, and it's the uh, popsicle cherry flavor. They have a midnight cherry and a popsicle cherry. And I kind of rotate through. Recently, I've been doing a lot of Hawaiian pineapple. Chase says, turn it off. It's hideous. The camera? If you want, there's actually a function on YouTube where I can go back later and just blur out my face. So if you want to just re catch the rewatch, it'll all be blurred out if you want. I did hit the like button, though. Thank you, Johnny. I will not be joining the show this evening. Too good for us, huh, Dewey? Um, I couldn't help but notice that the uh, the intro, there, there wasn't the complicated intro this week. Dewey's getting busier, folks. Uh, we need to uh, start raising money if we're going to be continuing to retain Dewey's services, which means memberships. We're so close to memberships right now, guys. We are like 600, 600 uh, followers away from be qualifying for memberships on YouTube. We're talking super chats. We're talking access to bonus content. We had a meeting on Tuesday and Wednesday this week for what the future of bonus content is going to be like. And I'm going to tell you one thing right now. It's not going to be like the total absence of bonus content that you're already paying for somewhere, somewhere else. I think you know where I mean. If we're going to be giving you bonus content that you're paying for as a member, it's going to be something. Whether it's the after show, whether it's the, the coffee breaks that I'm doing on Monday, whether it's uh, Dewey and John and Drew watch a movie together and give you some Rift Tracks commentary, or we're talking about possibly sitting down and reacting to awesome movies. Dewey has compiled a list of some movies that he thinks might be police-related for us to watch and react to, and this would be bonus footage for members. He compiled a list of 73 movies. Dewey is the ultimate movie buff. We were talking about reactions to... Uh, naked gun uh, to robocop and what it is if you haven't seen him on youtube is basically your host watches the movie and we just give you our fun takes and if it's a movie you've seen a whole lot it feels like watching the movie with us and that's something that's just an idea something that we would share with you for that subscription money that's going to happen real soon because comp center is growing 
And frankly, we need the money. So anything we can do to monetize Dewey so he doesn't quit the show in search of an income, that would be great. Felony Melanie just laughs a whole bunch, which is good. Silamander said, make it in the fall so I can save some money for it. Silamander, um, I don't want you to have to save a whole bunch of money for it. That's the thing. I get it. If you're staying overnight at a hotel in Des Moines, and we don't want you to stay anywhere terribly dangerous. You're talking about dropping a hundred bucks. Um, if you're going to go out for beer, uh, if you're going to have supper, um, if you're going to transfer, do transportation in town, that's not the bus. I get it. And you're driving all the way there. I think you live in Michigan. I get it. You're talking, you're talking a couple hundred there. Um, and it's not easy this, this time of year. I think it's possible that we might push it down the road if people want, and, and if Tanner, you know, if, if he needs time to get his passport or whatever, it's possible we could do that. I just said June because I don't want, I don't like planning things for like next year. I don't want to be like, oh yeah, let's meet up, you know, in six months time because then it'll just never happen. I want to give you something to be excited about now. So jump on there and indicate some interest and then we can talk about moving the date forward. Mountain Films, do I have to be at the Des Moines meetup? Uh, no. Why would you have to? You, you're a grown man. Silamander says, fine, Dewey. Yeah, Dewey, you you know, you could go for free. You just jump in the back of my truck. <laughs> Fuck around and find out. If Drew is in L.A., I might just go down and meet up with him. And, and oh, you could do that. I think he's going for personal reasons. Also, you live in Bakersfield. Silamander, boom, Halloween with John. I, Halloween, sorry guys, Halloween is the time that I spend uh, with my family. Or do we? Felony Melanie says, literally any other day of the year. Well, Felony Melanie, you didn't say, like, let's meet up any other day except for June. How did I pick the one day where you're not available? Going to a new Kids in the Block concert. Oh, okay. Felony Melanie, you are going to a band that came out uh, 36, 37 years ago and hasn't been popular in 34, 35 years. You recently went to go see a comedian, I think at Des Moines, uh, and you skipped a comp center to go see him. I don't remember who it was. It's that guy that does all that crowd work that everyone was just so in love with who's not funnier than me. So you have a history of felony, Melanie. You have a history of bailing on me. And so I'm very inclined to leave it where it is just out of spite to make you choose. But we'll see. Tanner's someone that I'll accommodate. So may, you might get accommodated just because I want to accommodate Tanner. Someone have to click interest for me because I don't get the Facebooks. Tanner, I don't want you to because I know what it would mean for you to try to attempt to get social media in your country. I've already assumed that you're, we have at least plus one status with Tanner. Salamander says, GD it. I got to make Facebook just for this as if I don't do enough promoting. You don't have to do Facebook just for this. However, if I, if I don't see likes or interests, I won't be able to accurately gauge how many people will accurately go. Now is a great time if you have another way of, to indicate who's going to go other than me like <laughs> creating an Excel spreadsheet and like emailing it to everybody. Let me know. What a whiner you are. I'm a bit of a whiner. I had a bad week and I feel like I get to whine. I think so. I think I, I get to whine because um, I'm not whining about the stuff that makes me want to die. So it's okay. Tanner says I wanted to go to that meetup, but I couldn't get it off. That's okay. Mel, you need you need better taste in music. I agree. I have great taste in music, she says. Don't let him make you feel bad if you can't make it. Uh, nobody needs to feel bad. I am not a big deal. Felony money, that's my nostalgia. I don't have kids. I do what I want. Good for you, Felony. Obviously, you do what you want. Uh, Jenna, do most of us live in the middle of the country? I would say no. Um, I would say I live in the middle of the country. Jenna, Drew actually lives in Florida. He lives in, in the Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay area. Um, I live in the middle of the country. David lives in San Diego. Salamander lives in Michigan. Johnny lives in North Carolina. Falk narrator, Falksy, she lives in Bakersfield, California. 
Uh, Tanner doesn't even live in this country. Uh, Abby in the chat, she lives up in the uh, Pacific Northwest. Mountain Films lives in my general vicinity. Mike lives in Minnesota. Um, who else am I missing? I think there's more people that are watching than are in the chat. So, uh, but uh, there you go. That's how much I love you. I was able to name pretty much mo where most of you live. Felody Melanie says, uh, John, we will go to Costco. I can go to Costco. I just can't go without there being some sort of mishap. Sillamander, same reason I was way too short notice. If people have to fly, it takes a while to sa save that kind of money. A few months isn't enough. You're right. You're right. Um, the thing is, Sillamander, I didn't presume that you would fly. And I, I also didn't presume to be a burden. I don't want you to have to feel like in order to do this, I have to like sacrifice each amount of money to drive or fly. If you can't do it, it's okay. I'm going to catch with you, catch up with you at some other point. So don't put pressure on yourself. Don't feel like um, it's everything or nothing. Uh, don't feel like you're being excluded because you're not. Like the whole thing with Des Moines, the reason why Des Moines um, is because Felony Melanie brought it up. She wanted to do a Midwest meetup. Uh, Will Craig lives straight north of Des Moines. He lives in the Twin Cities. I know that Mike kind of lives up that way too. Um, I know that Felony Melanie lives there. So it's like, and I know that Des Moines is not out of the question for me. So we took basically three people. And we're like, we're all kind of like Iowa's realistic for us. Um, and that's kind of where it was based off of. It wasn't based off of anything else. So, Silamander, you coming from Michigan, you know, you're you're definitely farther away. And But I don't want you to feel like you're being excluded because we didn't, we didn't choose it because it was a hardship for you. Um, I will catch up with you at some point. So if you can't go, Silamander, because money's tight for everybody, uh, don't lose heart. Uh, I will send you a whole thing of swag or something. We'll figure it out. We'll find a way to make you feel included. Michael Hendricks. I don't know where you live. Um, I also can like barely remember your real name. You have so many handles. Christy lives in the American Southwest. She lives kind of in the deserty Mexico region. Tanner says, uh, make a pull on the page of options. People like to meet up for this. That You never get anything done with a poll, Tanner. Uh, you have to take... You'll, re you'll realize this when you make sergeant. Uh, you have to just take decisive action, and then, then you just get complaints. And then you have to just do what you have to do. If you, if you leave it open, if, you, if I left a, open a poll, here's what you would get. Every single person would just say where they're at, and then you wouldn't get two, more than two votes on any one place. Believe me, I'm a bit of a pollmeister. I, I, I used to run polls and check with people about all kinds of things. And finding a consensus amongst a large group of people or a group this size i should say which is relatively small is very difficult to do so Manor says she drive for a beer well i will buy you beer mountain films actually john is the thickening agent i'm quick clot that's that's my uh, villain name is quick clot john is life a gross overstatement i would enjoy going but i don't have any money you're always talking about how you're at work I think Marine's blood is out in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania to Iowa is very far. Felony Melanie, I won't say what I was doing. Michael Hendricks, John is like the flour in our grease for sausage gravy. I might be. I might be a buttery roux. I might just be the fat. Um, John, this is how behind you are. Oh, 831. Jeez, I'm behind. It's 846 now. Tanner says midweek flights are cheaper. Um, yes, um, I don't get off in the middle of the week. I get off on Thursday and then I would have to drive and then Friday. And I mean, that's a good point too, Tanner. It's possible that if, if we want to have more people that we might have people fly. It didn't work out that way in, in, in North Carolina, though. We had the meetup on a Wednesday and four people showed up. So I can't make everybody happy. I'm going to have to choose which one of you I like the best to make that person happy. So I love this. Christy says, no, she doesn't start stuff. You're being a butt to her just to be one. Christy, it might be the case that I talk to her more than I speak to you. So who knows? Michael Hendricks says, uh, women and bees. I don't know what those little blue things are. 
Salamander, no, no, no. It's not ignoring us that we love. It's the beard. It does keep you from seeing the shame that is my unshaven face or my shaven face. My sister has seen it. She would tell you. I would pick on any, anyone pick on Abby. Abby's very pick onable. Tanner roasted. Who's roasted? You or me? Marine's blood. Man, my eyes are messed up. Accidentally tapped while welding. And had filthy water dripping in my ear. Oh, will you please stop paying attention to the show? Take care of yourself. And if you hurt your eyes while welding, definitely tell them it was an, an, um, an, an eclipse injury. Michael Hendricks. John will walk around the ocean and nobody would hear anything about him until Andrew finds his pig bones. I don't think she'd find my bones. She would find my dis she would find my severed feet floating around in shoes. That's a thing. Never tap Marines and let them break your arm and welder. Yes. Yes. Welding. I wish I could weld, actually. Uh, if you can weld, I think you're pretty... I might be wrong on this. Someone correct me on this. But I think if you can weld, you're pretty much set for life because somebody somewhere needs something welded. And if you can weld, especially if you can use do acetylene and all the different kinds of welding, you pretty much are just employable forever. You just let people know that you're a welder for hire, you know, ha has welder will travel. And I think you're good to go. If I could pick up one skill other than speaking Spanish, it would be welding. Uh, Tanner to Des Moines, <laughs> to Des Moines with no S. You know, what's funny, Tanner, is that Des Moines is French and, and uh, it's a little French around where you are. Memberships, memberships, Rufio, Rufio. You already know I'll subscribe. Thank you. We could use money around here, guys. Uh, Drew has been financing this since we left the network. There's been no ghost bed money. There's been no factor money. There's been no money. I'm cheap. I'll be here. I I I told him I would do the show for no money last year because just I you know wanted a chance to to make a difference. I guess. But Dewey signed up for money. He's in it for the boats and the hose. And he's been working for free and working his butt off. So we need to get uh, 3K followers. So we're so close. Please share it with somebody. Somebody you think might like it. Just to push us to three. I know we'll get there organically, but get it sooner rather than later so we can drop a big buttload of cash on him. I mean, it still won't be that much, but getting some money will give him a reason to not go to work at another job. Mysterious Theater 3000. Yeah, that was we were talking about possibly watching some movies for bonus content. Um, we don't need to dox anyone here. Felony Moni. He might be somewhere where he can't say. Can't you read his bedtime stories? Salamander, I used to do that on Patreon. I used to read stories like the story about my dog, Dana. I checked the, uh, the listenership for that. How many people were listening to Storytime with John? Everybody hated it. That's why I went away. Nobody was listening. Marine's blood. I I meant arced the welding rod without my shield on. Yeah, you got to put the thing down. We could locate a house in advance and just squat in it. Iowans don't take kindly to that. I was one of those ones where you still get shot. Meet up in Makoketa. It's cheap. Uh, Felony's offering to drive you in the style of a soccer mom. Let's meet in Montana. Tanner, that's a little closer to him once he crosses the border. Jenna, what is, says John, what is your take on UFOs? And have you ever experienced a supernatural experience or sighting? Well, as you can see, Jenna, I want to believe. What is my take on UFOs or uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon? Bear with me because I don't want you to just react to this. I absolutely believe in UFOs. And I do not believe in aliens. I believe that there's definitely uh, craft that are being flown through the air, whether by our government or other governments. I mean, with that Chinese spy balloon thing, um, we have had airplanes, particularly during the Cold War, um, that were classified, uh, various stealth bombers, um, the Blackbird projects like that that have been classified now we're at a point with satellite technology that we don't really have to use reconnaissance spy planes like the blackbird um but there's, there's only going to be some kind of stealth technology 
I think it's entirely possible that, uh, I mean, look at, look at the DOD's budget. Look how they just came out and said, you know, the day after 9-11 or the day before 9-11. They're like, oh, yeah, we misplaced trillions of dollars. We don't know where it is. And the 9-11 happens and then no one's asking about the DOD's budget. That happened again recently where the DOD just said, yeah, we have no idea where all this money went. The Department of Defense can't account. They can't do their own accounting. They just spend. They're worse than me at, at, at Costco where all of a sudden they just all this money is spent. Um, there's a famous line in Independence Day where uh, the president is seeing all this technology that they have at Area 51 for aliens, which, I, again, I don't believe in. But he says, like, you know, how do you guys get funding for all this? And Judge Hirsch famously says, well, you don't really believe they spent $200 on a toilet seat and $500 on a hammer, do you? He's saying that, uh, you know, the the DOD uh, cooks the books and that it's it's fairly obvious for anyone who wants to look at it. So I believe UFOs exist. I believe that our government lies to us all the time. I don't believe that we have been in charge of this government since probably the Eisenhower administration. Eisenhower warned about it when he left. In his famous speech, he was warning about the military industrial complex, what we would now call the deep state. Kennedy said he didn't know who was in charge of the CIA. I think Vietnam was an entirely a CIA operation. Um, the CIA had its own private uh, airline industry. Uh, the CIA was moving uh, stuff in it. They were they were involved in the in the narcotics trade. I think uh, that there's people in this government who don't rule with any kind of oversight from the population and they do it through uh, executive power executive agencies regulatory agencies and uh, uh, they don't have congressional oversight and there's no direct line of control so it's pretty much like the the men in black of the people that you see on the x files it's these syndicates these men who have uh, who have power but you're like what subset of government do they belong to? And the answer is really just executive branch employees who could do whatever the fuck they want. And I believe that somewhere in there, uh, you know, that's where UFOs come in. I believe that they're part of our, um, uh, that we, you know, government contracts with uh, Lockheed Martin, Boeing to a lesser extent these days, but that's how money all gets turned around. It gets all gets spent on campaigns to get the people elected who give money back to. So it's, it's all about uh, the money and the government, the power keeping everybody rich. I think that explains it. John, invent cheap teleportation that would fix all our problems. Have you seen the fly? Doesn't get easier. Tanner, Melanie, I cannot disclose my location. Tanner is in, a, in an undisclosed location for his safety. Tanner says he's jealous. Michael Hendricks, uh, Don Seals, Marine Osmond, support that idea. 940. It only takes me to catch up. Thanks, Marines, bud. You could do a shared Google document. I do so many shared Google documents just to keep this team going and the other team going to produce all those shows and to do this. Everything's on a Google document. John is in the no way. Eh? Uh, the thing is about the Google document is that I would have to know your email addresses and like you'd have to just DM them to me. And at that point, you might as well just DM me. And it's just like, well, then I might as well maintain my own spreadsheet and just mark down who said whatever. Just go to the Facebook people. I'm trying to make it easy on me. Johnny says, I'm down for the meetup and the movies. I just got to know the month and I'll be going out of the country again in September. So far, it's June, but I'll let you know if it gets moved to the fall. Looks like a lot of people might want it moved. But you have to say so on Facebook. Uh, Tanner says, yay, is in King Arthur, yay, because he didn't put an H on the end. Yay, we may not, we may want to go. I don't know who we is, Tanner, but we don't have to go. We may not have the means to go, and that's fine. It would be a shame if you couldn't go. Montana's pretty sweet. I've been there, Tanner. Quit doxing, everybody. Christy, man, no matter what I do, it's wrong. Tanner says, hell yeah. He never says where he is, but he could say where we are. I could tell you why that is, Christy. It's because, first of all, you don't even have a job, so nobody cares what you say. If I say something stupid or bad, I don't want my boss and my coworkers getting phone calls at my job. And then I would have to quit. I would literally quit all podcasting if that happened. So that's why. Uh, Michael lives on Mara, probably Mars. Uh, Michael Hendricks lives in Ohio. I wonder where at, Michael. Tanner says, fuck, Sergeant. I ain't doing that shit. You're a smarter man than me. Felony says, I totally don't care if you know where I live. Not, yeah, she's already said she lives in Mago Cutter. Uh, it will be tomorrow before we read this comment. 
It's 8.57. Tanner, someone breaks into Melanie's residence. <laughs> Boy, that would be bad. Uh, Melanie says, oh, hey, sit down, have a beer. What's up? Anything new with Robert World? Uh, that's how, maybe how they do it up where you are, Tanner. Here we have Curtilage. Christy, he's going slow tonight. Well, I don't have Dewey tonight. John, you live super close to me. I'll fly to the town and we could carpool. Uh, here's a fun story. I recently got invited to go to an event in North Carolina to an event that Drew was also invited to. And this person said, hey, you and Drew can carpool. And I almost replied back, you don't know me and you don't know Drew because neither me nor Drew will ever carpool with another human being. In fact, one time when I was at the state penitentiary, I literally went to the doctor and I got a note from him saying that I got car sick and I had to drive. And that meant I had to take my own car, even if it meant I didn't get compensated by the state to drive. I did this because there was a person going on this trip for training who had a crush on me and I found her obnoxious and I didn't want to spend any extra time with her. So I literally drove myself, paid for my own gas, got a doctor's note to do this all to avoid her. So I don't carpool with people and neither does Drew. That's why I said even Dewey had to ride in the back of the truck. He has to ride in the bed of my truck. Uh, I do love Dewey. Yep. Yes, yes, Abby. Thanks for the support, everyone. Abby, did you guys know that you can watch Abby Ellsworth on, on being a police officer? You can go and support her on her podcast that you could stop dogging on me for my all my anti-Abby takes. Um, <clears throat> It's a funny way of showing it. Whatever, Dewey. I literally wait around after church just to talk to you and to see your smiling face. <clears throat> I'm skipping that one. I don't know what it means. <laughs> welding is great. Underwater welding specifically. Tanner says, I refuse to believe it. Fake news. Welding isn't super hard. Just the tools are expensive. I occasionally weld for work. Yeah, I tried to teach myself to weld, though, and it didn't work. Apparently knowing the metals and then like using the flux and then the sparky sparks. I ended up like <laughs> uh not welding it. <laughs> like created all this like molten metal and like it just didn't work. It was stupid. It just was it just taught me that I can't learn things. <laughs> I need my boats and hose, Dewey says. Elijah's here. I don't know where Elijah's from. Christy says, John, a certain bomb squad do we know is now scuba certified and welding certified, so probably we should watch out for him now. No idea. Elijah, I kid you not, I went to sleep to a few of them. Bullshit. I listened to every single episode of the On Stories. Check the receipts. Yeah, Silamander, some people listen to it, but way more people were listening to every other thing it didn't it made no sense because every single all the listens on that patreon were all the stuff that was on spotify so we we made people pay to listen to something they could hear on spotify or itunes for free and they were they were paying to listen to it on a different platform rather than getting a spotify membership or and then they would cancel their youtube membership so all we did was move a whole bunch of money around and create a lot of more work for ourselves that's why you don't see a lot more stuff, a lot of my stuff on Patreon anymore. I'm still on that network, but nothing ever drops for me on Patreon because I realize that, like, it, it just wasn't very streamlined. Uh, why do you have conditioner in your eyes? Probably because you want soft hair. History story time with John. Falker on Find Out Sheep. Uh, Faulkner, did you like listening to story time with John? My favorite story was how Andrew Baxter became a cop. That was a good story. Tanner says, the USA stole a Canadian superplane in the 50s, 60s and took down the project. Look it up, wild stuff, or forget the project name. How convenient. <laughs> Accuse us of an international crime, and you don't know the name of it. My sister cannot go five minutes without mentioning D.B. Cooper. Uh, D.B. Cooper. It's called Avro Canada CF-105 Arrow, in case you're interested. Okay, sorry. I didn't mean to level a charge. You obviously you took care of it. That's what they want us to believe. Uh, she found the stash, or she's connected to DB Cooper. Ah, April, man, I'm like eight minutes behind her. John is Ann just trying to get your email addresses. <laughs> don't email me. I'm saying don't email me. Exactly. I want that on being a police officer. Isn't really her last name, Abby Ellsworth Cooper. Hmm. I wonder if it is a real name. I'll never say because we can't dox people around here. 
Marine's blood, you wouldn't need to. You just make it so anyone who has the link can edit it and then share a link. Yes, I know how that works. Um, maybe that would be easier. I, I put a thing on Facebook because I thought it would be easy, and now I'm already doing a second thing. So if I do this, then I'll be doing a second thing, and then someone else will tell me they want me to do it a third way. So again, I have to be an executive here, and I have to say this is how we're going to do it, and then I'll just absorb your complaints. And then even if I accommodated you, I would still be bothering someone else who doesn't know how to use a Google Doc. So, I mean, who can I make happy and who can I make mad? I get to decide. I'm not saying you should stay where you are. Just don't stay where anybody is. I was trying to show you that I love you all and that I care that some of you can't come to Des Moines because some of you are in San Diego. Some of you are in uh, the Seattle Tacoma area. Some of you are in Tampa. Some of you are in Maine. Ben Allen's from Maine. We literally have people from the four corners of this country listening to me. Wouldn't need everyone's email. Well, we might if like there's an emergency or I need to I need to communicate with everyone in a hurry. I live about 50 miles east of Columbus. Tanner, difference being I don't have a crush on John, so we're fine. You say that, but you haven't met me in person. Tanner, you never know. I'm world changing. <laughs> Felony doesn't carpool either. If I were Cooper, I'd pay for, for y'all to fly to the meetup. I think Cooper died, and I think his money just got washed away. Thanks, Abby, you're a hidden gem. If only she was hidden, but she's not. She's here. I'm just kidding, Abby. That was super mean. You have to have the flux capacitor set right, or John won't, or your uh, welds won't work out. I, yep, it didn't work out. I didn't get it right. You have to mix it and watch youtube videos i watched the youtube videos and learned that i can't i'll just ask you right now can you weld aluminum and if so how it didn't work just nothing happened marine's blood pertaining to welding uh where there's a weld there's a way so bring it up as a membership content here bring up what is membership content bring it back as membership content here um, so man, I don't know what you mean by that. I take it that you're not a Patreon member anymore. Here's the fun thing for you, Silamander, and I'm going to share this with you right now. This is just for you, Silamander. Most of that stuff, um, the stories that I told, it's already on my own personal YouTube. Difficult to look at pictures. It's already there. I had a series of podcasts that I did before I ever did any of this. And it was all just experimental. My sister heard this stuff just to see like if I could do it. And it was all by myself and it was called interesting guy. And then, so it's, it's videos, but it's, there's no, there's no visual component. And if you really want to hear stories from me, Salamander, the old stuff, particularly, it's already on difficult to look at pictures, my YouTube page. I actually have my own YouTube that's for me that has existed since like 2010. And I'm going to show you a video tonight from my YouTube. So that stuff uh, exists. Felony says, yeah, I don't know why I'm paying for Patreon. I would say, I don't know why you are either, or I would say, continue to tell you to, contern, to continue to do that. But Deadleg has been, uh, you know, sick or something lately. I don't, he hasn't been making down the poll. Ke Kiefer hasn't either. Uh, Eric, he recently made something for Patreon, but it hasn't dropped yet. So it's like, uh, it's pretty slim pickings out there. And uh, hard time left because we we had uh, Jake on that show and he wasn't getting any money from the Patreon and he was doing all the heavy lifting on that show. So I'm like, well, let's take it independent and see if you can earn for yourself. I'll help you make the show, but this is essentially Jake's show. And I'm pleased to report that he has a few subscribers. It's not a lot. Our audience isn't huge. It's less than it's much less than Com Center, but there's something there and he has something. And I think that he enjoys uh, doing a hard time and I think it helps him feel better and deal with it in the same way that Comp Center helps me. And if hard time never makes it big, that's okay. I do it uh, uh, for the love of uh, correctional officers and because uh, it's a fun show to do. Everybody's friends now. That's good. Marines, but I find it fun that we talk about something. Move on to another topic. And then John, John catches up. You know, I, it's like it's like we should all be like uh, like I should send links to everybody and just be on uh, on here like the way they would do with crispy donut. Hypothetically, that could be done. Uh, Abby says, "Do you know there is a Des Moines out here?" 
They say Des Moines as not the French version. They say Des Moines in Des Moines, Iowa as well. They also say Des Moines. I think the French pronunciation is Des Moines or Des Moines, Des Moines. Probably. Uh, this question is for Felony Melanie. Is it Dubuque or is it Dubuque? Because I always grew up with like Albuquerque on my mind because I had family in Albuquerque. And then I would see uh, Dubuque and I'm like, let's pronounce Dubuque, Dubuque. In fact, we would drive on I-80 on our way to Albuquerque and I would see Dubuque and then, or Dubuque. And I'm like, well, that's Dubuque. I don't know. Pointless. Michael, starting with aluminum. Well, there's your problem right there. You got to start with some mild steel. I'll look for some steel. It's 2206 where I am. Is he making progress? Uh, yes. I'm, I'm only about two minutes behind now. I will bring a welder with me when we meet up, and I will teach you to weld, John. Thank you, Chase. I can't wait to learn how to weld. Uh, I'm sure I have to become a certified welder to actually do work, though. Uh, Maureen says, start with steel. Aluminum is for much more experienced welders. I haven't tried it yet myself. That, there you go. I was welding with aluminum and some other metal that I didn't know what it was. I was just hoping it would all just melt together. I just, I, I welded uh, with a lot of hope. We fucking love Jake. Well, I'm glad you fucking love him. Uh, Abby, hard time is great. Are you a subscriber? It's another episode dropping tomorrow for subscribers. Let's see if we can get that up. Just have that in it constantly in the way. No, that's the wrong thing. Yeah. No, that's... Nope, there we go. Everything's backwards. So there you go. That's in the way. All right, so I'm getting I'm getting caught up. I'm getting caught up. Michael Hendricks. John was going to start with titanium, but his purge tank wasn't working right. <laughs> what the fuck is a purge tank? We could crowdfund some merch for hard times so we can promote it, and it doesn't cost you money. I would not ask you to do that. That's very kind. Uh, we thought about doing patches at one point because I think I like patches and uh, I think correctional officers like patches, but that's not based off of anything at all. Um, it's possible. Could someone share a link to a, to the Hard Time channel? Michael Hendricks, there's no Hard Time on YouTube yet. There are 10 episodes of Hard Time on my Facebook channel. The first 10 episodes are on, on difficult to look at pictures. If you click on my name in the chats, I'll jump on here so you can see where I'm at. Hold on one second. I'll see what I can do for you guys. Um, but it, maybe if you can click on my name, I'll show you where my channel is. Maybe that helped. Okay, so there's 10 episodes on there, but where can you find Hard Time if you want to listen to Hard Time? It is on Spotify. It is on iTunes. Um, you Sometimes we broadcast the shows live on X and Instagram on um, Jake's channels, which on X is Jake Mother F 69 and on Instagram, which is Jake Motherfucker Welder, we don't have an Instagram presence specifically for the show because it's we're trying to make him a podcaster and not have it be so much about me and having having me have one more thing to do. You can catch us on Spotify, um, and uh, there's two episodes a week. So on Monday you get your free episode, and then on Friday you can listen to a subscriber only episode if you subscribe. And if you don't want to pay for it, then you just listen to the Monday show, and it's just like any other podcast where it's once a week. But on Friday there's that bonus episode. Last week was just such a good Friday episode. So good. Um, it's $4.99. So it's the it's uh, more expensive than some podcasts, but it's like buying a beer for us. It's like buying a beer for Jake's child, buying a coffee for us. And it helps him a lot uh, to be monetized and to be a legitimate podcaster. He's literally made $37 so far. That's not a lot. That's literally as much as he's made collectively from all subscriptions but we've only been subscriber based for about a month we were free for almost a whole year we started april of last year we put out 
we put out almost 50 episodes before we made the before we made the podcast monetize. So if you want to go check out Hard Time and you're not ready to commit money to it, go listen to all our back episodes. We have so many great episodes in there. If you like listening to me, I presume you are because you're here. And if you like listening to Jake, there's so many episodes there for you. And if you like the show, buy a subscription and then cancel it. Just give him $4.99 just once. And then you can listen to all the subscriber episodes. There's only like three. There'll be the fourth ones tomorrow. You can have access to our full catalog. And there's just some good stuff in there. Like Abby and I did a breakdown of um, Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, that's a free episode. If you want to talk about what correctional officers think about whether or not Jeffrey Epstein was killed in prison based off of my experience and how, and if you think about it, Jeffrey Epstein was being held in, in a federal facility in New York City. It should be run a lot better than where, whatever prison I was working at in the middle of the fucking moon, right? Well, as it turns out, the facility being run by the feds in New York was uh, run much less well, according to their alibi. So it doesn't make sense. So you can find it on Spotify, iTunes. You can actually listen on Audible if you want to listen. Um, Amazon Music. We're, we're on all those platforms. You can listen to us. And it's for free. And you can you can get a subscriber-based uh, content if you want. And in some ways, what I do on Hard Time is a kind of a pilot program for what we do here. So I don't know what that means for the future of this. I think I subscribed to Hard Time. I, I'll check. You could mention I have guest hosted. Abby has guest hosted. I did miss a show or two, and Abby guest hosted. Abby also has her own show. Abby, everyone here knows you. Different kinds of metal is not something you should do. Why? Because electrons would flow from one or the other, and then there would be like rusting and stuff. Why wouldn't you want to bond two different kinds of metal? The chemist in me wants to know. I think it would because you would create a battery. Right? You tell me, Marine's blood. Uh, Chase just says nope when I say here. You're supposed to click on my name, and I think it's supposed to take you to, to my channel. Uh, I think you can mix metals, but it's very advanced welding. I am not advanced to anything. Crowdfunding for the making of it, because subscribers will pay for it, then give the profit of the sale to Jake. It's not necessary, but I'll bet people will do it just to have the merch. Patches are fine. You have to, to in order to justify the production cost, you have to you have to produce them in bulk to start out with. You, I can't just make like so. We have forty. We have forty listeners to that show, Salamander. I know the numbers; they're not good, right? Compared even to Com Center, we have an audience of forty. At one point, when Anthony Ganji stopped by the show, we peaked as an audience at about 110, 120, because a hundred because a lot of people from Anthony Ganji's show came and listened to our episode, and then then they left. They didn't stick around which is okay but there's in a given week we get about we get about 40 downloads a day in a given day and our audience is somewhere less than 100 and only a small proportion of that are going to want merch so in order for me to make merchandise where we would break even i would have to build a bigger bulk order than our entire audience size so comp center is getting closer to merch um but hard times nowhere near it michael hendricks okay got it john regarding okay Jake's a good guy. Jake is only okay. Episode 50 is hard, but great. Episode 50 uh, was a landmark episode for us, and I got upset. Episode 50, when I was watching it, I wasn't really prepared, and my stomach turned over. And uh, I was really, really upset. I'm actually so mad about that. He doesn't feed his children beer, though. Well, beer has food value, so he may as well. And alcohol uh, is an astringent. Thank you for mentioning the episode I did with you on Hard Time. Abby, you did like nine episodes on Hard Time. You've been there since like episode three. You've done a bunch. Remember we did we did uh, Escape from Bibb County and uh, we did like three episodes about, you know, uh, the serious ones way back in the day. You've been on you've been on a bunch. Your audience is bigger than mine anyway. You always want me to mention on being a police officer, but I guarantee you that your audience over it on being a police officer is bigger than mine. Do small town U.S. police, USA police departments utilize at the on-call schedule to help alleviate staffing levels? What it is, Tanner, at least where I work, and I work in some very small towns, um, in a small enough town where you have one police officer or one and a half police officers, meaning a chief full-time and like a part-time guy, they go off duty, and at that point, uh, their calls are taken over by the county. Um, 
if it's a city ordinance issue like noise complaint or something like that uh they will usually do their best to like settle the problem down but in terms of writing writing a ticket for the ordinance unless there's a contract between the city and the county they don't they won't even write that so if there's a city ordinance the county won't enforce that they generally just keep the peace and they'll interview and they they'll uh, enforce you know any, any kind of uh state laws you know anything that's a, a serious misdemeanor drugs uh violence uh drinking and driving anything like that just like they would anywhere else if the county goes off duty where i am you have a person who's on call which happens quite a bit in the county i live in there's no police officers on duty typically when i get off work very very early in the morning and so i'm driving home and i'm falling asleep and if i go into the ditch no one will find me until daylight which is fine uh but they'll be on call status so what it is is if i have a call for service while they're on where they're, they're 10 10 while they're on call i call them at home and i wake them up and tell them hey i have a call for service for you go put on your uniform and get going if it's an emergency i'll get somebody from the state rolling that way so if it's in a small little town uh say you know like uh, springfield or something because every state has a springfield um it's you know and there's no police officer on duty uh i'm going to call the county guy who's on who's on duty or uh on call i'll get him a going but then I'll also call the highway patrol, which always has somebody on duty all the time. And, and they could be coming from 50 miles away. Lights and sirens, it might take them 30 minutes or more to get there. In an emergency, like if, if someone's being uh, assaulted, stabbed, you know, uh, sexually assaulted, anything like that, I might just put up the call for any unit in position. And then the agencies that are nearby will make their own decisions of whether or not to go. They don't have to go into a neighboring jurisdiction to go solve that issue, but they are state certified law enforcement officers, so they can go over there and enforce the law. What's interesting is where I live, we also have a state line. And so uh, if somebody drives right over that way over the state line and something bad is happening, we cannot go over there unless we're invited. The reason for that is that my officers are state certified as police officers, but they're actually not, excuse me, they're not uh, certified in the next state over. So when they go over to that state, they're just regular people. And so uh, this, the one state over that, you know, they might ask, they might ask us for our deputies or, or officers to go over there to assist them, but we're like not helping like in an official capacity most of the time because we're not cops in that state. So good question. If you knew someone who had access to a sublim sublimation machine in vinyl and who is unemployed. Um, yeah, I know some guys who do patchwork. So, yeah. Chase, I've seen a glass beer bottle welded to an aluminum before using steel rods. So anything is possible if you get drunk enough. I was sober. That could have been it. I bought dispatcher shirts from my department, hoping they do something nice for them. That was nice of you. Guys, this telecommunicator's week next week. You aware of that? How many of you are thinking about doing something nice for me? <laughs> Just kidding. Las mujeres no tiene pollos. I don't know what we're talking about, but I listen to my local police channels religiously. I'm going to tell you right now that I find that creepy. I do. My local police channels religiously nationally is an incident-based situation. Los Angeles and Orlando always get action, though. They do. Uh, Los Mujeres, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I almost certainly am. Uh, the night that Atlanta had riots, I turned on Atlanta comms uh, because I wanted to know how bad things were there. That was the night that the lieutenant told uh, dispatch that we're not responding to calls. To hear no radio traffic in Atlanta whatsoever was scary as fuck because you know that town on a, on a Friday or Saturday night is always rolling. And they had calls holding in dispatch, but they weren't being dispatched because no police officers were responding. And that was a very scary night to hear silence. Orlando always got action. There's always something going on. Not here, though. Salamander says, I know I priced it out of the kids' band. We can do it down the road. I nearly bought a press just so I could make it all myself. Here's the other thing. You know, I talked about, uh, people talked to me about um, commissions last last week or the week before, and it was very anti-commission. If we're talking about prizes for you guys, like, I don't mind. Just, like, I could do, like, 10 things. I could do 10 mugs. I could do 10 patches. I could take a bath on it financially and just do it because I love you. Right? 
Like I'm not doing it to break even. I'm not doing it to make a profit. I just do it out of kindness. I'm capable of doing those things. If you have seen a piece of artwork that you really, that you like, like that Nintendo cartridge that I did last week, or if you liked the uh, the comic book panel that's in the Instagram story this week, and you want to see that on a mug or something, you have to tell me. I don't know what's popular with you guys. I don't know what you like. You have to communicate with me, possibly with a spreadsheet or a DM. Uh, that's why you could take the cruisers home. That's a good idea. Uh, I know that's huge for cops for some reason. I don't know why. I mean, I guess I kind of know why. Because you could start work from home. You don't have to drive to work. You're like on duty as soon as you leave your house. Uh, I'm a beginner welder, so I don't know too much, but I suspect you would need different amps for different metals. And getting just the right setting to weld without punching through would take skill. You sound like you know what you're doing, because that doesn't sound like anything that I was doing. Tanner is happy to know that it works the same there. In Pennsylvania, the firefighters and ambulance people are volunteers, so it's 24-7 for them. I don't dispatch any professional firefighters or ambulance drivers. We have semi-pro ambulances where they have advanced life support with paramedics on board, but no professional ambulances, no professional uh, firefighters, and they're, they are uh, volunteers. And during COVID, none of them were going. We would have patients that would have respiratory problems and the ambulances wouldn't go. And I would have to start just, I would have to start calling ambulances in nearby jurisdictions before I could get a crew together. And people died at home. And uh, what do I say about that? Uh, I was mad because I went to work and these volunteer people who took some kind of an oath and uh, are all about the, the blood, guts, and gore when it, when it comes to a motorcycle accident. Um, they know they're not going to these COVID calls. EMTs and firefighters, you can tell when they're excited. You can tell when they want to do a call and you can tell when they don't want to do a call. And I don't, I don't like that, um, you know, that they're in it for some things, but not for others, but I don't volunteer at all. It's not that I didn't try. The fire department didn't take me. Falk around and find out this show helped my perspective and sat with my department. I heard a few five-year-old call. I hope that it's helped somebody do anything anywhere because then it would be worth it. Tanner, yeah, on call for eight years. Uh, it's really effed up my body and sleep. Feel bad for you, man. Washington State has some weird rural sheriff stuff. Uh, if you want to talk about Washington State and their sheriff stuff, Abby would be the person you would talk to. Wherever Abby lives, their sheriff is no longer an elected official because the people voted to make that not an elected thing. They literally voted to have fewer rights. Micah said, should we get Jake on? I know a guy who knows the guy. You mean tonight? Possibly. I'm not, I haven't even caught up with the chats yet. This is why small town America appreciates gun rights. You got to be prepared to save your own ass. That is true. There's a lot of people out there that aren't prepared to do that, though. Cross county jurisdiction now. Yeah, there's some mutual aid stuff where people just automatically help each other. For example, in the county where I live, all the deputies in the county where I live have been sworn in as deputies in the county immediately north of me. That is not so that they can go work there and get employment. It's so that they are just, they just go, they go over there and they're automatically, they're sworn in as deputies. They can, they're already deputies for that county. It just, it's automatic. They don't have to get asked. They just get to go. Uh, you should text them. Venmo 10 bucks for you to get a drink next Wednesday. Thank you, Fox. Do you have my Venmo? Las Mujeres says, ha, 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 I live in the ghetto, man. It's a necessity. I used to live in the ghetto. You probably don't believe that based off of the way that I conduct myself because I'm not street smart at all. I don't seem like a person that could survive in the ghetto. But I left when I was youngish, probably around 11 or 12. Uh, Drew hooked me up with a scanner app. Listen to hear my friends at work. Now I listen to be aware of what's actually happening around here. Had a huge explosion. I get where that might be interesting for you guys. As soon as I'm done for the day, I don't want to hear the radio anymore. Les Morris says, well, maybe not all Pennsylvania, but at least on the township level, they get personal lights and sirens for the vehicles there, the Quaker type. Pennsylvania is different. The townships there, the way the townships work are very different than the way it works out here. Um, in Michigan, uh, there's townships in those places and the way that they, the way that their local government works is, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's, man, it's really different than where it is here. Um, so, you know, I don't know. Um, 
firefighters here get uh, get lights and sirens on their personal vehicles. Pizza, pizza drivers wouldn't deliver there. They don't deliver here. I'm too damn far away. Cops wouldn't go there. Danner says it really opened up the border, no pun intended, on the issue of response for police. Mass casualty events have really uh, pressed it into reality and for the better. I think that's a, for a good idea. I think it's for the best. I mean, uh, you know, if you've got people that are certified in a state or in a province or whatever, um, and you've got like a mutual aid thing going on, um, it just makes sense. You're more flexible. Um, what I don't like is federal oversight. And you see that a lot now with, um, gosh, I wish Drew was here, um, where federal governments, they did this in Allentown, Pennsylvania. They did this in Albuquerque where they put uh, some kind of federal, not Allentown, Pennsylvania, Patterson, New Jersey where they put some kind of federal control over the county and it's just a way of federalizing police and I don't like it. If one of you guys in the audience can think of what I'm thinking of, say in the chats. You can tell I'm fading fast here. Uh, is it dependent on the county population or geographic size? What do you think of the Alaska State Troopers? Are they a cut above? Uh, population and geographic size, what it often also comes down to is what is the size of your tax base and your property values? your property values aren't very high, your tax base isn't going to be very high, you don't generate a lot of money, you can't generate a lot of income, you can't have a big department, you can't attract the best people. So sometimes it just depends on like what your actual population is. Yep, Christy, what was that? A consent decree? Is that what that's called? Silamanda lives in a township in Michigan. She knows what I mean. Michigan older than Washington. Michigan is older than Washington, yes. That's probably a good point. Uh, on the East Coast, everything was closer together and smaller because we didn't have automobiles when those when those states and towns were settled. So people were walking or taking uh, horses to get around. So like, uh, like if you go to Charleston, South Carolina, all the houses are right next to each other. And it's so that you didn't have to walk a long ways to see your neighbor. Whereas if you get out to Wyoming, like you better jump in a pickup truck and ride for 30 miles before you find somebody. That's kind of the way the country is set up. So um, Washington has some big cities, but I think it's large, mostly a rural state with the mountains there. Uh, Micah says, people here live in a county. They do realize that there are non-volunteers at times. They may as well be unincorporated. We have unincorporated. We have, we have a county in this state that literally doesn't have a sheriff's office. So if there's a crime committed there, like it's the only people that respond to the state is highway patrol. There's literally no one else to go. There's no city police. There's no county sheriff's office. If someone dials 911 in the unincorporated county, it's just uh, it's just state jurisdiction. Literally nothing else. Pennsylvania is pretty big, though. It is a big damn state, the Keystone State. Uh, go Cowboys. I don't know what else to say about that. It's not much different than neighboring cities. Dave, oh... Dave worked in the city next to my township. That's how we got to be friends. I heard him use a, uh, use a street on his radio call. Okay. I recently learned that Alaska State Troopers will hire Canadian police officers, which I thought was cool. I don't think they make as much money as I do, though. Well, Tanner, there's no way to know because Canadian money doesn't even translate to United States money. Las Mujeres is, I live in Seattle, unincorporated Seattle too. Unincorporated Seattle. Unincorporated Seattle is a different thing. I think you're talking about Chaz or whatever it is. Silamander says here, county can respond to whatever as can state, but the city's retention PDs and the fire department's got their own citizens. Yep. Oh my God, bro. Oh my God, bro. Tanner, that is my ongoing thing. I, on multiple episodes of True Crime, I have mentioned that like we can't convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. I did this whole bit on true crime about uh, the body of Cindy James because the body of Cindy James was found uh, only a meter away from where the neighbor, she, her body was dumped in an abandoned lot. Her body was found only a meter away from where the neighbor cooked his food outside behind a fence. And I did this whole three minute bit. I'm like, you know, Kendra, there's so much going on here that just defies explanation. And there's so much that's beyond our, our realm of knowing and how much we can understand. I, and like, for example, like if I was going to tell you that the body of Cindy James was only a meter away from where the neighbor cooked the food outside, 
you know, we have no way of knowing how far that is. There's no way of ascertaining that distance. And so I do this whole big setup and then, you know, with all my florid language, and then you get to the end and you just realize that I'm kind of stupid because I don't know how far a meter is or that I, I think it can't be translated. That is a repeating bit that I do, that I'm, ver that I'm so smart, but I'm actually real dumb. So now it's official. The secret's out. That's what the after show is, just chilling while John catches up. Sorry. What did I, what did I, yep, Chase, yep, caught up, 2032. Oh, it's 2032 where he is. He just uh, doxed himself as being in the mountain time zone. Tanner, one meter. You're a funny man, funnier than I. It's not a competition. I think if uh, I think if you are where, from where I think you're from, you're probably automatically funny. Whoa, my God, don't try to teach me things. Water freezes at zero Celsius and boils at... Michael. <laughs> you know, I'm something of a scientist myself. I actually do know these things. I do. But it's not as funny <laughs> to explain to someone. Like Tanner this past week was trying to explain to me how minus 40 Fahrenheit and, and minus 40 Celsius is the crossover point. And I said, no, they can't be mixed. You know, and I'm just, I continue to do the bit. Showing off how much you know is never as funny as showing off how little you know. And I think if you're going to be the smartest person in the room, you have no need to, to show it. And I have no, I have no reason to show that I'm smart. So that doesn't mean I'm smart or stupid. I just, I'm going to be, I'm, someone's going to think I'm dumb at some point, whether I'm dumb or not. Like all the people who leave comments on the failure to stop YouTube page who say that I'm an idiot and they want Mike back, you know, it's like, I'm already disliked by more people who like me. So who am, I might as well just be myself. Maybe I should just sum it up to say that. Meter or metre. Uh, April does not. Measuring things is what they want you to, to do to distract you. And April would know. April's always using cubic centimeters when she talks to me, which she knows means nothing. How do you get how do you get liquid into a cube? <laughs> you get like a little like a little ice tray with a lid on it? What are you talking about? <laughs> you, got, you got a little graduated cylinder there? You got a little uh, Erlenmeyer flask, a beaker? <laughs> I'm glad you're still here, April. Uh, Tanner, Michael, I tried telling John about the polarity. This is exactly what I was mentioning. Las uh, Mujeres, Jimmy would rather have Michael play guitar than bring us uh, the science facts. Jimmy would rather want that. <laughs> Some inner lies. You're a writer. You're just waiting for you to realize it so we get a good book. I write all the time. I have a whole blog in which I write. I have a journal in which I write. I've written many things. The truth is, Silamander, you like the way that I write and no one else does. So, you, I'm, you know, anyone can do anything. It's like being a bowler, Silamander. What makes you a bowler? Serious question. What makes, you, what makes a person a bowler? Not just anyone who likes to bowl. That's a person who's bowling. I, you know, anyone good. Every is everyone at the bowling alley a bowler? No. It takes a certain commitment to the craft. Uh, a certain number of hours per week. A certain amount of, of of practice. Hundreds of hours of practice. I think you have to have some kind of a, an accomplishment, whether that's playing in a league or a tournament, or whether it's local. You have to be on a team, or you have to have won a match against someone, or at least competed in a match. I have done nothing which qualifies me as a writer. I've never even committed to work to a permanent form. Like, yeah, I've written stuff in documents and in my books and on my blog. Um, but let's face it, gang. Eric Tanzi's more of a writer than I am. All right. <laughs> Just want to draw your attention to the irony of that. Uh, and it's not that we don't love Eric. It's just that uh, it's possible that Ashley wrote that book. I mean, he didn't even write his reports, right, when he was a cop. I'm sure those of you that that have listened to as much failure to stop as I have know that when he was a police officer, er, that Ashley wrote his reports. And he got in trouble for that And because the sergeant would submit it back to him. And he goes, well, I'll have my wife fix it. And he goes, what do you mean you have your wife fix it? And he says, well, my wife wrote the report. And he got in big trouble for that. So 
Uh, but even still, his name is on a work that is in front of a professional publisher right now, and I don't have that. Sillamander says, I don't want Mike back. Because of me, or are you just, you're mad at him? Or if he came back, everyone, if, if Mike came back to failure to stop, I would be gone immediately. Because I'm, I don't have, I can't bring the business they can. Simple fact is he has a following. And even though I'm smarter, funnier, and more conservative than he is and cheaper, I don't have the following he has. Possibly because I'm just a dispatcher. I don't know. I don't really need to compare myself with him, right? Do I? And yet, I always do. Michael Hendricks says, I wasn't educating you specifically, John. That is correct, but you are now. <laughs> I also don't know how to convert it, so that's my own way. Just adding to the conversation, man. Michael, you're as smart as me or smarter. I did not even mean to open up the whole thing. I'm real tired. AI John, I'm not telling you my secrets. April, I know you didn't watch this earlier, but on my first show today, right at uh, 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 5.45, I started the show with uh, Jason Keeper, the firefighter. I started the show, and I said, you know, welcome to the show. And I said, Jason, what are your deep, dark, personal secrets that you would never tell anyone? <laughs> so I, just, I immediately tried to put them on the defensive, but it didn't work. Christy needs to keep watching the X-Files. The truth is out there. The truth can be known. Hendrix, Hendrix, for those that didn't get it. Uh, fuck everyone else. Drew's probably the main reason why I'm still going. Eric is too, to be honest with you. Eric, uh, you know, I just mentioned how this podcast isn't monetized, but I do get paid through Eric. So I'm not here to bash anybody. Because uh, the only reason I have anything is because of both of those guys, is because of Erica Drew. So even if you're, you know, have fallen out of uh, favor with some of those guys, remember that they are the reason I'm here. Sometimes a bowler has to face the music. Is that from Kingpin? Is that from um, Big Lebowski? Uh, sometimes a bowler has to face the music. I don't know. John is to be efficient to be AI April. I am not AI April. The dude abides. Okay. I think I got it right. Christy says, I don't love Eric. You don't have to. Goodbye. Good night, Christy. See you in the future. Faulkner says, because you're awesome. Thank you, Faulkner Raider. I wish that most people felt that way. However, I do. I manage the YouTube over there and I get more comments about where's Mike at? Who is this guy? Uh, someone was really unkind to me recently. Uh, I don't remember what it was. Uh, but it's only because of PTSD that I don't remember. And I was like, he's been gone for a long. I've been here longer than he was here. Like literally, like the, just the number of months and number of shows, considering I do two shows a week. And by the time he left, well, he was doing two a week, wasn't he? Because he was doing Uncuffed and he was doing the Friday show. But number of months, I've probably caught up to him. Uh, next time I hear that name on this channel, there will be fines. Oh, maybe I mean Eric with a K, the guy from Two Cops, One Donut. Tanner, all of which is true. You have more hair than Mike the Cop. Now that my sister's gone. <laughs> I do have more hair than him. Fuck. Damn right. And here's something else. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention Mike the Cop. I was a correction officer for six and a half years in which I'm putting hands on criminals, handcuffing people, dealing with all the gross and terrible stuff that he's dealing with, murder, uh, whatever else. Then I left that and I became a 911 dispatcher for nine years. So cumulatively, I have more than 15 years in public service in two different areas, which I use to talk about stuff on failure to stop. And no, it's not the same expertise as the police officers on those channels, but I bring more professional experience to bear within the mindset that like it's possible that that mike went through more major incidents that i did i bet he the guy's more popular than me so i don't know what people want i don't know what they want all i know is it's not me dad came into the chats hello drew drew's in and out a little bit of the old in and out so manner says i was there for dave then andrea and then you and drew uh yeah congratulations to andrea Dave was hilarious. I thought Dave was the funniest. There's so many things to say about that. Kingpin. Superior, far superior to Big Lebowski. And that was actually funny. 
I don't think Kingpin was superior to Big Lebowski. I think Big Lebowski may be the most important movie ever made. Not the best movie, but the most important. The person in that one collar. Michael, I feel, uh, don't fuck with the Jesus. Yeah, that part was uh, weird. I can't, can you believe that guy got his own sequel? He's the least important character in that movie. I would have rather seen the guy in the Iron Lung get a sequel. Oh, you couldn't sit through it. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out. Mike only had, what, six years? Uh, I think he, yeah, actually, uh, somebody who knows better, I think Mike had maybe an eight or nine years. Wasn't it 10? So I'm interested to tell him, Britt, this mf -er always yucking his own yum. Who, Michael? Can't take a compliment or courage to save his own sanity. I don't do well with compliments. Uh, Salamander, you've been really nice to me lately, and you've got to know this about compliments. The, here's the thing about compliments. If I make myself accepting of compliments, I'm also going to make myself vulnerable to criticism because either way, you're caring about the opinions of other people, and I have to be able to stand on my own to do this, to be like out in front of people. And like I said, there's a lot of people that just hate me because I'm not Eric. There's a lot of people that just hate me because I'm not Mike. There's a, I, there's people who are coming and commenting on there. Where'd you breeze you? You know, and then, you know, and they see me and they're not happy. And, um, like that, that, that guy, a couple, a couple weeks ago, who had just nothing nice to say about me. Like if, if I take compliments seriously, I'm going to take that stuff seriously too. And it's nothing against you. It's just, you have to kind of, uh, do your own thing and you can't worry about it. What other people think either way. Doing now on dispatch has caused night terrors. The things you have heard. Um, yep. I didn't sleep. There was a night earlier this week where I didn't really sleep at all. I'll just say that. It was a hard week. I could show a video of an emu tripping into his food and we get 260 views in the first hour. Yeah. And why is that, Drew? Such malarkey. Las Mujeres, bro is looking sleep deprived for sure. Oh man, I am. I look like trash. I'm sorry. I'm going to like turn down the light. <laughs> Help you guys. Uh, when did the fine start? I'm fine. Sorry, guys. All right, I've caught up on chats. Do you guys want to see uh, a video? It's about six minutes long, so it's a goodish video. Some of you guys know that I am really big on Chick fil A. And uh, there was a time here before we had Chick fil A and we had Popeyes. And uh, some people implored me to, to try Popeyes because they thought that Popeyes was better than Chick fil A. And um, so I set out to disprove that. And so it's a kind of a funny video. April says, is Drew saying the emu has more charisma uh, than Jonathan? I think an emu definitely does. They're definitely funnier. And uh, we both have like, we're, and it's an excellent comparison, April, because an emu is tall and weird and bald and hairy in all the wrong places in the way that we both eat. You know, I do kind of a pecking motion. Uh, and I, uh, we both get confused with ostriches a lot. Tanner drew that example was very specific. I warn you that anything you say, give it an evidence. What do you mean by the emu? <laughs> anything you say, give it an evidence. You sound British, Tanner. You remind me of watching Law and Order UK. Uh, Las Mujeres, I just hope you're getting decent rest. I'm not. I'm not getting decent rest. I'm not here to complain more, but it's like I don't get decent rest. I, I, have, I always have something to do. Tomorrow I need to take time off and be away from the things that I have to do. And I don't have time to do that because I have to do more things. Jonas level of brilliance that I aspire to have but never achieve. Dewey is the same but with different skills. Dewey is smarter than me. Come on. Eesh. Drew, you're smarter than me. You used a word tonight on a show. Uh, pers perseverant? And I was like, holy crap. I, I never hear you bust out a word that I've never heard before. And you did it tonight. I never had Chick-fil-A. Uh, boy, Tanner, you are doxing your own self here. Chick-fil-A. Uh, I have a feeling we'll be forced to watch anyway. Chase, you can look away. Uh, it's okay. I'll give you, I'll tell you what. I'll start screaming when it's over. Uh, I raised demons for times a kid. 
okay. Play it soon so I can watch it before I have to go back to work. Okay, I'll play it now. And then if you still want to talk to me after the show, um, just hang in there and I'll continue to talk to you. Like my wholesome, funny intellectuals. Okay. Tanner and everyone else, hang on. I'm going to play a video about uh, me going to Popeyes. That's uh, it's the best I could come up with on short notice. to see me try a Popeye sandwich. Now the story with me and Chick-fil-A goes back all the way to when I was a kid. I grew up with it in Virginia. You had it all the time. You took it for granted. You know? I moved out here to South Dakota and I almost forgot about it. <sighs> then I realized I really miss Chick-fil-A. About 10 years ago I stopped out at one and ever since then Chick-fil-A has been a really big part of my life. But there's this guy in the, in the polls group, his name's Logan, sitting. He's a, been a friend of mine for a while, or never calls or anything, never gives him any mozzarella sticks. But uh, he hates Chick-fil-A. Why? He's got a bad attitude, partially. Uh, he's got a peanut allergy and it'll kill him. I guess it's pretty easy to hate things that kill you. There's a lot of things I like about Chick-fil-A that go beyond merely just the chicken. Though. You know, I like the service that I get there. I like the friendliness, I like the speediness. You get through that line in no time. The waffle fries can't be beat. Diet lemonade. You know, it tastes like real lemonade, but... So we'll give it a shot. I'll see what Popeyes has to offer. And maybe it's a huge mistake. Chicken that delivers, they say. Oh, they have lemonade here, too. I wonder if it's any good. Welcome, Papa. My name is Terry. What can I get started for you? Could I get the uh, spicy chicken sandwich combo? Okay, your side order and your drink order. Fries and uh, lemonade. You want a chilled lemonade or frozen lemonade? Well, just or fountain lemonade. Just the fountain lemonade's fine. Anything else? That'll do it. Seven fifty-five. I'll see you up here at the window. Okay. Thank you. He didn't say thank you. He didn't say my pleasure. So it's kind of like normal. I felt like he was a little gruff. Uh, but also a faintly southern accent. And uh, that'll work for me. Let's time him though. There's only one other car in front of me. This was Chick-fil-A. I'd already be done. Boy, I shouldn't have smoked two cigarettes filming this. <laughs> I'm gonna die now. I suppose from a purely scientific point of view, smoking the cigarettes was probably a bad idea because you know, now if I do die, I don't know if it's from Popeyes or from the cigarettes. Only the coroner knows for sure. All right, not bad. It's seven o'clock, by the way, prime chicken hours. Thank you. Thanks, have a good one. Okay, I am preparing to eat my words because that was pretty damn fast. But I'll say this though. Um, not a huge line for Popeyes. Why is that? You watch, I'll make a video when Chick fil A comes to town. It'll be like a state holiday. Start with a lemonade. Uh, it's just fountain lemonade. I don't even know why I'm bothering with that. It's just Minute Maid. That's what they have, though. They had chilled lemonade and frozen lemonade. Neither one of those is... Oh. I'm not even going to drink the rest of that. That's awful. That's just Minute Maid, though. Okay, so... That's my fault. Alright. First look at the fries. So, these look very, uh, they almost look kind of overfried, uh, kind of peppery. They're tasty. 
I like these fries better than um, probably McDonald's fries, probably Burger King fries. They taste almost like they were fried in the same grease as the chicken, though. All right, so you get this foil bag that's a lot like Chick-fil-A. I love that chicken. They marked it spicy. I ordered the regular one. Could I get the uh, spicy chicken sandwich combo? So, if they gave me a spicy one, then they're down a point. Because Chick-fil-A never gets my order wrong. When they do, it was the right thing to do. And I always thank them for it. So, first look. Well, we got this weird uh, orange mayo stuff. That could be the spicy sauce. I don't know. Bun's a little limp. It's either they're going for the southern style chicken sandwich. You got the piece of chicken on there, the two pickles. But again, that weird sauce that I, I don't know what it's supposed to be. It looks like it's mayonnaise mixed with something else, which I don't know what Chick fil A sauce is, but I know it's delicious. It's a little messy. Look at this. I mean, it's not, they're never like what you see on TV. But uh, this is not as pretty as a Chick fil A sandwich. I think that is spicy sauce. Um, it's good, but nowhere near as good as Chick-fil-A. It is pretty spicy, but I think it's because they add that sauce. I don't think there's anything different. When you order the spicy chicken at Chick-fil-A, it's an actually, they, they, it's, the chicken is actually spicy. It's not just the sauce they add on. So I don't know, it's good, but it's really, I'll never come back. It was not worth any of the hype that they made it out to be. This is like, um, if you really want to get a good chicken sandwich and Chick-fil-A doesn't exist, I could see why Popeyes would do well. Once Chick-fil-A gets here, this place is going to close. You watch, it's going to be a dress barn in about one year. All right, so that, so that was me eating a Popeyes. Um, if you guys like that stuff, I have more of it. I don't have a lot more of it, but, you know. It's something different different being presented. Nothing about the police, nothing about the decay of Western society, you know. It's just meant to be light and more fun. And, uh, you know, that's what you could get. Uh, speaking about the truck, Tanner says every two U-turn is an Austin Powers turn. Yeah. Uh, you're the reason I'm glad I didn't work in fast food. I thought I was pleasant to the guy. And the food was actually okay. It just wasn't Chick-fil-A good. Los Moira says a 4x4 Toyota, old school's like early 90s, best in my opinion. Yeah, probably. I mean, I don't know. I, I did get the Dakota for like 700 bucks. Uh, I'm glad that I made your day better, Tanner. Honestly, that's if I can make your day better and my day better uh, by doing this, then uh, that it's all worth it, no matter how tardy I, uh, tired I am. Or tardy. Party City. Um, okay. I can't believe Will Cray is not here or David. I wonder what I did to offend them. Not sure. Uh, Silamander says you can't uh, just say you care if we like it or not. All you say is women are confusing. Yes. Everyone's confusing. <laughs> Maybe that's a broader brushstroke that I should be painting with. You know, it's all it's all just damn confusing. Uh, I think we can uh, call it a night, right, guys? I mean, 13, there's still 13 people watching, which is good for me. I think that's more people that watch the sports show tonight. Somehow more people are interested in watching me just read comments than they are, like, listening to me break the news of the death of O.J. Simpson. Thank you guys for watching. And no more Collins. Tanner, I think that you went to special lengths to get that. So, and uh, I will uh, open up the, the comm line. Let me put that number on there. 
So I think Tanner wants to call in, and I don't, I don't, I don't want him to not be satisfied with life. I think that's good to go. And then uh, I'll also invite someone. I, I would rather go to bed, but you guys want to uh, keep going, so I do it all for you. Abby doesn't do this for you. On being a police officer, is an audio-only podcast that drops once a month. And she doesn't do live. She doesn't do YouTube. She doesn't do any of this stuff. And yet all of you are telling me to leave Abby alone. I am the hardest working man in podcasting uh, that I could think of. <laughs> and uh, everyone's all, oh, leave Abby alone. What about, you guys should like gang up on Abby. You should be like, you need to leave John alone. Like John uh, works hard for uh, nothing. All right. With that in mind, I'm not getting a phone call. Hello, Lauren. You can tell I've never smoked before. You bet your ass I've never smoked before. Lauren, have you not heard the story of me smoking? Uh, I tried to start smoking at age 30. I waited too late, and it never took. I honestly, I tried, and it never, never caught on. Here we go. I don't know why I can't hear it. That's not a good sign. Uh, hold on one second. I'm going to get you. I, I thought it was already connected and it's not. We're going to get you connected. So just hold on one second. We're going to get you on. All right. Can you hear me? Hello? Call from. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Hello. I have nothing to say. <laughs> of course you don't. After all. I have nothing. In, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have nothing interesting to say. Uh, that's okay. So June doesn't work for you? What doesn't work for me? June, the month of June. June? Oh, yeah, that's right. June. Well, it's pretty, pretty short notice because May long weekend is the start of our busy season, and it goes all the way to September long weekend. Oh, yeah. Typically I, where you've got the majority of our call volume is coming. You have a lot of tourists in the summertime where you are, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I think last year we had 2.8 million, uh, 2.8 million uh, tourists. All right. Well, with you in mind, and with Drew not thinking that it'll work, and with uh, felony not working, I'm officially moving it back to uh, September. <laughs> September? Question <laughs> mark. Yeah, September? Question <laughs> mark. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, oh, I, I don't know, I don't know if I told you yet, but uh, expecting a little baby popping out here, and, and the due date's in September. So, you know, uh, congratulations! So that'll be a rough time for you to be traveling as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, end of end of September. So, oh, uh, end of September. I mean, she's down. Yeah, yeah. So we do it early September. Oh, I'm just kidding. Well. I would want to do it early September too. You want to know why? Why? Because my birthday is late September. Whoa. <clears throat> That's weird. Well, you know, Tanner, uh, sometimes <laughs> people um, have special occasions. Well, you know, the first thing that uh, my wife's uh, extended family member said when we told him, and he's very like hardcore Czechoslovakian, like thick accent and everything. And he goes, "Oh, it must have been a cold winter." And I didn't know what to do. I just kind of looked at him and was like, "Yeah, yeah, so yeah." Um, Drew says we could meet up for the birth. You know, uh, you know, if you have a couple cops there, a couple firefighters, and a dispatcher, you know, I could at least close my eyes and tell you what to do as long as I'm not looking. You know. That's true. That's true. Actually, and, the doctor made a sick joke. And <laughs> and if and if you don't mind, I don't know where you're from. I presume you're from Montana. But suppose you weren't from this yeah, country. Yeah. You your child would be an American citizen, and you would have an anchor baby, just in case you were from Mexico or something. Oh, that's so true. Dual citizenship. Yeah, absolutely. What were you going to say though about a monster? No. Yeah. No. Our our doctor. Uh, one of our first visits because like being in our profession, you get to know like all the other 
um, professions, you know, of the higher grade around, uh, your area and whatnot. And, uh, we had our checkup and he made, I don't, I don't know if he just felt comfortable making this joke because he knows what I do for work. And, you know, we've worked together through certain things and he just looks at me with a, like with a serious face. My wife was horrified. And he said, so are you prepared to potentially deliver the baby in the ambulance? And my wife just looked at me. She's like, no. <laughs> well, the good thing is, is with the first one, you know, like you usually get a little bit of time, but I, I guess, you know, it depends on how much wilderness you're in. And, you know, uh, where I, where I lived this past year, we literally had to send a state plow to drive all the way up to somebody's house to go get them. So they didn't have to deliver at home. So. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, similar that, principle. That's, but, a, uh, that's yeah. a hypothetical situation for you, right? Yeah. It's a hypothetical situation that definitely won't happen for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, better not. Right. Um, so maybe sometime prior to then. So the thing is, is if June, if you can't get off for summer because of the tourist season, but it won't really wind down, it's got to be winding down like in August for you, right? I mean, it, I mean, it really doesn't wind down until like November to be, to be ah. frank. I mean, it's starting to pick up right now already. We've had quite a lot of prisoners already this week. And uh, I held some, actually arrested someone this morning for a bail hearing from a domestic that stemmed from last night. Handover from night shift, you know, because that's how it works sometimes. But yeah. uh, anyway, um, it's just kind of, it's, it's one of those, you know how it is. It's one of those jobs where it's just kind of like never, no time is a good time. You just kind of have to do it. I know, but if, 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 so, if you're trying the hardest, like Felony Melanie can't make it because she has to go see uh, New Kids on the Block, which is a joke to me. Yeah, that's true. You can't go because mm -hmm. you have to enforce the law and because you have to sire the next generation <laughs> of human beings. Oh, yeah. I think you won this one, so. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think we're all pretty equal, but uh, that's just how I roll in these days. Um, but I, I think, think that I guess officially um, I love you all serious. the same, but yes. I'm dead serious on the carpooling thing, by the way, because if that's a lot cheaper and easier, I'm definitely hopping in the back of your car. Um, that new truck that you got, I'll, I'll be sitting in the back seat. You'd show for me around. That thing might be for sale. So if you can, if it, it, are there emission standards and other standards where you, where you live? Is there safety, is safety inspection? But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it'll never pass a government safety inspection ever again. <laughs> no. The, the no, but you know what a lot of people do? A lot of people go to their friend who's a mechanic, right? And they just sign off on that, that form. Yeah. That happens all the time. They did that in uh, Virginia where I'm from. Here's the thing. No one, uh, you'd have to be very, very unscrupulous to do that. If you took it to like a regular shop that's like state certified or whatever, you know, the kickbacks or whatever, mm -hmm. they would literally say, hey, uh, we, we got something we want to show you with, with this vehicle. And you'd be like, oh. Is there like a fan out of alignment or something? And they'd walk back and they would literally show you crushing the truck. I'm like, here's your bill for crushing <laughs> the truck. Now everyone's no safer. Way. You know, uh, it's very, that's very, awesome. very rusty. So that's that's too bad that you can't take that's it awesome. with you because I would like it to have a good home. But um... although there are a lot of really good old vehicles uh, where I live, because they don't use. Um, salt on the roads where i live you so it's just straight sand yeah just straight sand so there's hardly any rust on most vehicles out here which is quite nice where i live they salt it in the summertime so <laughs> no way <laughs> no they, they don't but if you looked at the truck and i and maybe i will send you a, a picture on dms or whatever but uh you will be shocked mm. You will be shocked, but this, yeah. this thing has full cancer, and, and maybe you've seen, you've probably seen something like it before. But the idea that I was that this thing was a uh, road legal, and that I've been driving around, and that the registration on it is current, you know, would blow your mind. So nice, nice. It just keeps reoccurring every year, and it just keeps going until you, you tell it to stop. So it's, it's going to stop you. It's not starting right now, but this weekend it's supposed to be in the 80s here. So I, it, that should be warm enough to get it to start. So I'm going to put the battery back in it, and we'll see what happens with it. And uh, if it's not going to, if it's not going to turn over, I'm going to have to find someone who will fix it for cheap, or I'm going to have to take it out behind the barn and shoot it. So. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah. Well, I'm going to pull you right now and say, uh, 80 is, that's really hot. I think that, uh, once it gets above 50 and you walk outside, you burn immediately. 80 is hot. You're damn right. It's hot. That truck will have no excuse. <laughs> that's the whole point. I'm not, I'm not trying to see the, trying to start the truck when it gets to 80. It's like, it's like, you don't like someone trying to wake me up at seven o'clock. You're going to get punched. If you wait till 1130, that's much more reasonable. I'm much more likely to get up. I'm waiting until it's, <laughs> until it's later, until it's nice and warm. I'm not asking too much of this right. truck to start. And uh, so it should start. And if it doesn't start even under the most ideal conditions, that's how I know that it'll be time. That'd be. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you calling in. I know that you probably stayed up only for me to say like, well, I'm too tired to talk to anybody. And that was kind of terrible. So thank you for calling in. I did. I needed to put some uh, boost in in your juice or booster juice whatever the kids say these days i don't, I don't even know what they say. i don't have any idea anyway it is yeah me either it is late so and my wife's already started going to bed so i'm gonna go to bed as well i'm on call at 4 a.m so oh gonna, my gosh to, go to sleep hit the hay right now go to sleep go get to, you're not even getting a full eight hours go to sleep man i'll talk to you tomorrow nope <laughs> see you guys all right have a good night thanks for calling you too bye all right, joining us now, a special guest here to talk about why you should buy beer for his children. Jake, motherfucker, welder. Jake, are you here? Can you hear me? I am here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Are you ready to take over? You could just do it from here, right? Yes. Uh, I, it's almost last call for the kids, though, so I will have to give them a final round. <laughs> you could just go ahead and host the show. Canadian Mario Kart. <laughs> yeah, like you're just reading out loud what people say. You're not. I said, wonder how many points you get for Trudeau. This is silly, Mander. Which I actually do like uh, Canadian beer. It's stronger and uh, superior to most most beers in the Americas. I do like uh, Yingling, though. I can't get that here. I can't get Canadian beer here, so I have to like drive north. I have to figure out how far north I need to go because it's been like almost ten years since I had like decent Canadian beer. I can get one. I can get a Labatt Blue here. That's about the best I can get. By the way, should this be over you so that you're more anonymous? No, it's okay. I mean, I okay. do reels and stuff like this all the time. It's all good. Okay, but I could do this, and that would be <laughs> funny, right? <laughs> no one agrees that it's funny. This is your time to talk to Jake about hard times. And some of you had questions about it. Right. And I don't know if how serious you were. I don't know if Michael Hendricks is still here. We're down to 11. We were up at uh, 19 a few minutes ago. No. Phone calls always kill it. People don't ever don't like listening to other people's phone calls. Because when Kendra called last week, all of a sudden everybody left. And it's just like, you guys hate Kendra? Because I think she's pretty cool. Oh, by the way, you can still call me if you want. I mean, if there's someone that wants to call, you're not forbidden. Oh, yeah. Mine probably is American. Silly Mander was talking about American brewed Labette isn't the same as Canadian, which is true. But like I said, it's it's hard here in the Southwest. That's the best I can get. Um, Michael says, I'm here. I want to listen to Hard Time. Wasn't able to find it on YouTube. Michael, how can I get in touch with you? Are you on the Facebook Uh, John, did I get a PO, PO box? No, but you could send things to Kendra. I'll tell you where you could where you can send things. Oh, I don't have that here. PO box 1060 Deland, Florida 32724. That's PO box 1060 Deland, Florida 32724. That's from memory, guys. That that's pretty good. That's better than I could do. Because I'm a so. fucking dispatcher, and you just fucking remember stuff. <laughs> Uh, Kendra sent some weird memes, so it was her fault last week. She sent me those memes. She, she those weren't meant for the show. Michael, I'm I will send you a link to Hard Time, but I need to know how to get in touch with you. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, I could probably just do it on this computer, right? Probably. Probably. Stand by one, as we say in Dispatcher Land. So hold on. Is this where I'm supposed to talk, so you don't get any details. You, you've talked. Well, I flapjack. Yeah. <laughs> Why would I send gifts for you to, to her? That's what Silamanda wants to know. Gifts? Yeah. Michael says he's on the wolf pack. Failure to stop uh, Facebook. Well, we're not going to do that. So here's the, the link. I don't know. Can you guys click that or not? 
That is literally the link to the Spotify show. It's also on uh, Apple or iTunes. And other yeah, it works. Like so you can click on that link, Michael, and then you can go to that. And then I'm going to send you one more link because this is my chance, right? <laughs> right. And if you can't click on a link, we can't help you. We can. Uh, I mean, at that point, uh, yeah. it's over. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to send you one more link. And this is kind of where I hold my hat in my hand, but I'm doing it for Jake. I, I, Jake, if you want to tell them how I haven't taken any of the money or anything from you, I mean, I, I don't know if you even know that I haven't done that, but I mean, like, you know, tomorrow I, when we do that, I'll show you how much money you've accrued. This is the link if you want to subscribe. So if you want yep. to get two episodes a week, click this link. It's four ninety nine a month. Four ninety nine is a lot, but it's as much as a beer. It's as much as a coffee. It goes directly to Jake's children. Um, has vitamins for them college potential for them it doesn't go to me i already get paid by the network uh it's 4.99 he has been working on this show for almost a year is he the best no has he produced a fuck ton of content for you to enjoy that's like in the same vein as everything else that you have liked so far everything that you've enjoyed since uh i won't say his name because i don't want to get fined but since the mike the cop years coming into the drew breezy years coming into the jonathan bates years and now he's sort of like the 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 great 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 grandson of drinking bros i guess it's sort of the ultimate uh, permutation of that uh you can get breakdowns of correction stuff uh we try to make it light we make it funny there was an episode last week where he literally had me laughing out loud really 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 hard uh, episode 63, I I couldn't stop laughing. Um, and we put cool. in a lot of media clips. We usually try to reference a lot of movies because uh, Jake and I both uh, have a lot of references. I have to see Monsters Ball so I understand it. It's mm. not really beer for the kids, Chase. It's it's a beer for him. I, like, I, always, I always just say it's for his kids. Right. It's more like just barley and grain for the kids. It's, it's not like we don't boil it and go through all that hassle. The kids got to get their own yeast. Yes. Yes. And then uh, brew your own kit. They can make it in the closet or whatever. Yeah. Then in six months, when he's, when my son's, you know, four years old, he should be able to drink, right? Yes. Thank you, Michael Hendricks. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to acknowledge the fact that you have another follower now. Um, so there's a couple episodes in there that are better than others. Uh, there's an episode about the murder of Michael Frankie. That's really cool. It's like, a, it's almost like a mm. true crime episode. Uh, what are your favorite episodes? Episode 50 it, was, wasn't an emotional one. Um, Michael Frankie is much better than the show uh, without a movie without evidence. That was fucking difficult to get through. Um, didn't didn't make a lot of sense when I was watching it, um, but I watched it for the viewers for for Michael Hendricks. Now, I, that's that's also out there for him. Um, I really enjoyed your episodes with April. Um, going yeah. over all the, the gross prison stuff with her, um, why people don't value their buttholes and so forth was good. Uh, she has so many good lines. She's, <laughs> she's honestly like one of the funniest people on earth. Uh, mm -hmm. Episode 62 was a paid episode, but uh, honestly, I thought it was great. It was about an execution actually that occurred this week. Mm -hmm. uh, episode 60, inmate dies doing what he loves. He was killed while escaping. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. Yeah, episode guy, 15 episode 59 is about a guy who got in trouble for going to a, going to the bathroom while he was on duty that was, <laughs> nope no pun intended right <laughs> you said duty <laughs> um let's see what else uh episode one the most prison story ever was a pretty funny episode uh episode 57 is about a guy who escaped from prison using just lotion and electricity uh 56 is about a guy in uh Idaho, who's so old, we can't execute him. Uh, episode this... episode fifty five is about it is about an officer being taken hostage. Go ahead, Jake. Mm -hmm. Silly Mander was asking if you've seen the trailer for the new Joker movie. I have not. I have I'll not. Check either, it, so I'll check we'll it out after this because I'll probably watch that. Kid, the kid makes bucks a, a buck out of oranges. I don't know what that means, Drew. The kids make buck out of oranges. Yes. You, you should make an episode list with asterisks for John Rance because every time John Rance, Jake falls with cool comical. I know I'm like I'm like I can't stand civilization anymore, Jake. And and I had already promised to turn the show over to him at three points. He goes, um, 
Yeah. So make sure that you're doing your rounds. Make sure you document any problems. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> like I, I get, I get completely wound up and I don't even work there anymore. He works there and he's not getting wound up and he's just like, and yeah, you just got to do the best you can. You know, it's tough for everyone. Well, that's um, the thing. You know, I'm, I have, uh, the other sergeant that I work with that I'm briefing at the end of my shift, I get to vent to him, you know, I have the show to vent to you too, you know, and then uh, I'm in professional therapy as well. So that's um, good. I have a, I have a lot of, I have a lot of resources, John, to try that's... to keep me calm and collected. So I don't go all falling down on. So you, can you guys tell that? I'm not in therapy. Uh, episode 48 is one of our most highest rated episodes. People love episode 48. It's called the fugitive Two. Oh, <laughs> People love that one. Uh, Live on X and Instagram is just an episode that we did about uh, the attack on the two NYPD officers in Times Square. An episode people hate as episode 46. It's actually a very fun episode, but it's called Sextortion for Fun and Profit. I think people actually saw that episode and thought that I was teaching people how to do sextortion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which yeah. I'm not. I'm teaching people how to not have that happen to you. It's actually a reverse extortion sting where John sends sexy photos um, and then he, you have to pay him to stop. Yeah, you have to pay me to stop. Episode 45 is one of our best episodes. We have a, a, a deputy on from uh, the Northwest who just tells some interesting stories. It's as good as any failure to stop episode you've ever heard. Um and Drew, uh, Drew said he shared a hard time link earlier on. So thank you, Drew. Thank he, you. He shared Drew, somewhere. Drew owes us an appearance because he was going to talk with us once about an escape that he had from some kind of custody thing, but then it never happened. Uh, episode 43, that's the Michael Frankie true crime one. That's very interesting. Episode 41 got was got a good traction. It's called Stolen Brains. Quite a mystery. Again, yes. this is all prison stuff. Um, Meg doesn't listen. She probably listened to that one. She doesn't listen to any of your other Meg, podcasts. So. Meg actually told me she couldn't listen to that one. Um, 38, we talk about prison tattoos in that one. 37 uh, was a pretty funny episode because it was just everything going wrong at Christmas time. Um, uh, 36, 35 was an episode that Abby was in, not me. So if you like Abby, there you go. Uh, oh, yeah. Don't forget about all the, the food references. The oh, yeah. Food Jake, references. Jake drops all his uh, recipes. We talk about booze. Uh, episode 34 is actually really cerebral. Like we talk about how we deal with institutional decline. Like has nothing to do with any specific case. Well, Drew, what are you doing tomorrow? He says he wants to do. He still wants to do the escape story. Drew usually travels on Friday, but let's see if he's uh, available Friday because Friday is, is a day that we record. So. And and to be honest, uh, Jake, I would love to monetize the Drew episode. <laughs> Maybe not though, because like uh, people can hear Drew for free. So why would they pay to hear for him on our show? That doesn't make sense. Which one was Zach in? Who the hell is Zach? Oh, he was in episode forty, I believe. Uh, yes, he he just came in and just hung out in that episode. He did, he didn't have a lot of like specific commentary on the situation, but it, he he just did the episode with us. That was in number forty. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, Michael. Uh, so, uh, those are some of our favorite episodes. Uh, Escape from Bibb County was another one with Abby where we were playing it very serious. And at the end, I got very serious at the end. Uh, the Via Lobos incident with Kendra was very, was very fun. Well, and I like the Bibb County one because there was so many details that they had left out of, uh, the reports. So it took a lot of research to really figure out what was going on and then getting like Abby's perspective. And then you didn't like Abby's perspective. Um, <laughs> when she took it back, but that's good stuff. I, I enjoyed the Bibb County one a lot. I thought that was fun. Episode 25 is about a, a guy that gets killed and it was supposed to be an assassination on an correctional officer and it went wrong. And that episode is, is still very cool. At 22, we talk about uh, a cartels who assaulted a prison in Juarez. They literally pulled up to a prison and killed a bunch of people, staff inmates, and broke a bunch of people out. Very cool. Mm. Um, yeah, I've never been shot at with a 50 cal at work. So yeah, I, I got to say, <laughs> I got to say my experience, that was a little outside my wheelhouse, but uh, fun to read about. It's terrifying to be involved in, I'm sure. 
19, con- uh, we, we confront that question, ultimate question of how do we deal with uh, transgendered people in jail and how did Dallas do it right and how did they do it wrong? Episode 16 is a cool episode that we're probably going to redo as a video. Um, and then uh, episode eight is a really fantastic episode. If you want it, it's me sitting down and having drinks with a guy that trained me to be a correction officer. This guy knew me. He knew me when I was just... 25 years old he became my field training officer and he taught me everything i needed to know to be a correctional officer and it's just him and me shooting the shit it's episode eight the forgotten cop john's field training officer it's a favorite episode uh because you will learn everything you ever wanted to learn about young me when i was still a very very young guy uh, episode five how inmates destroy officers abby's in that one she's in episode four as well um in episode three we talk about uh some uh some inmates that got that drown in a prison transport man i mean there's so many good mm-hmm. good episodes at the risk of patting myself on the back i think we have especially jake since he programs the show uh we, he has done a good job of finding stuff to entertain you with and uh i try to try to bring my uh innate johnness to it so mm-hmm. and then there's uh, these and dad jokes and uh I'm a yeah. little bit younger than John by a, a handful of years. I'll be 40 this September, around the time that Tanner's son is born. So that is how I will know I am free to leave the earth because my replacement will be here. Uh, <laughs> a Dazzler and a Candelabra. Yep. Going full Liberace on the Drew Breezy episode. I will have my uh, shirt on, though. Silly, don't worry about that. I All right, guys. Myself with markers. We're over two hours. I I am tired. Jake, thanks for joining us. We'll have a new episode for paid subscribers tomorrow. Otherwise, we'll catch you Monday on a hard time. Thanks, everybody, for watching. It's always a joy to hang out with you guys in the chats. Thanks for watching the Cobb Center. We hope you enjoyed it. Next week, we're going to be talking about what happened to Amanda Nenegar. It'll be part two, maybe even part two of three. These things tend to go on. Join us next week. We appreciate you. Uh, Leave us a voicemail, 848-COM-911. That's 848-266-6911. Hit us up at uh, Difficult to Look at Pictures or What's Said Drew or the Comm Center or Facebook. Hit, hit like or subscribe. Remember, we're so close to 3,000 followers. If we can get there, we can start paying Dewey and we can keep Dewey and we can keep the content getting better. We need to stop Dewey from leaving. We need to stop Dewey from getting a job elsewhere. Keep Dewey in-house so that we can have a professional producer to make this show. You guys have seen what this show has been since we have been on our own since January. He has made it better and better and better and better. Let's bring him on here more and more and more. So do what we got to do to get to to three to 3,000 followers. Please share with a friend. I know we'll get there, but let's do it now. All right, guys. Uh, I appreciate everything that you're doing for the Comp Center. Thanks to all my comrades. We're officially moving. Uh, the, the meetup, we'll move it to later in the fall. We'll figure it out. Thanks for everyone who's in the chat tonight. Uh, sorry for doxing all of you. Uh, sorry for everything. Uh, all right, Jake, you want to take us out with a Jake joke? Uh, John, do you know what uh, country everybody's terrible at singing in? I just wanted you guys to note for the record that he was ready for this. <laughs> what country is everyone uh, terrible in singing in? Singapore. Singapore. Very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Talk to you later. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Thousand years of Com Center. A thousand years of Com Center. <laughs> <laughs> Say good night, Jake. Good night, Jake.